with a Snapdragon 765G, Adreno 620 GPU and only 8GB of RAM, you may think that the brand new Pixel 5 isn't going to be great for gaming compared to some of those newer devices out there with 12 or 16GB of RAM and the newest Snapdragon processor. Well today what we're going to be doing is taking a look at some gaming here on the Pixel 5 to see if it can handle it and play up there with the big dogs. So let's take a look. Now since using the Pixel 5 I have really put it through its paces with a ton of applications and a ton of games but today we're going to be concentrating on Asphalt 9, Call of Duty Mobile, Genshin Impact, GTA Vice City and also of course PUBG Mobile to see how it plays and handles games. Now to get the negative out of the way first, if you have big or large hands like I do for example, gaming can be a little bit finicky because the screen on the Pixel 5 isn't necessarily the biggest out there. Now I do also like the super thin bezels around the Pixel 5, but it's not great for actually holding the device, but if you're going to use something like an external controller or you do have slightly smaller hands, it's not really going to be too much of a problem. And also as you can see from this gameplay and also this close up here, it doesn't really impact having the hole punch camera either. Now again, it's not necessarily as obtrusive as a notch and it's not as good as a full screen display, but overall the notch kind of disappears into the background and I didn't really have any issues with any game elements overlaying under the camera or it getting in the way. But now onto the gameplay. Now what I've done is I've got these five games which in my opinion cover a massive spectrum of high performance graphics, high frame rate, intense gameplay to test out on the Pixel 5. Now I also use the built in screen recorder on the Pixel 5 while recording all of the gameplay you're about to see so definitely keep that in mind when you're thinking about how taxing this is all going to be on that 765G processor. So let's get to some gameplay. So of course one of the first games that we had to try was Asphalt 9. Now as you can see here from the average frame rate down the bottom it was averaging around 60 frames per second. Now I say average but it was basically a constant 60 frames. Any slowdown that you do see in the above video there is mainly because I was using the built in screen recorder along with the actual gameplay itself. So again although the 765G is pretty good for most things, once you put it under really heavy loads it can start to show but if you're going to be playing this game without screen recording and any issues at all then you're going to have a really great experience. Now this is also with all of the graphics pushed up to the highest level as well. With Asphalt 9 you do have different options for performance or the visuals. For me I went with the visuals and was still able to hit that 60 frames per second. Overall the gaming experience was really nice with Asphalt 9. Again the hole punch camera in the bottom left hand side didn't get in the way whatsoever. So again if you do want to play a really high octane racing game Asphalt 9 on the Pixel 5 works perfectly fine. Next up then we have Call of Duty Mobile and this one really surprised me. Again I went into the visual settings, turned everything up to the highest that it could go and it was still averaging 90 frames per second and it was pretty much sticking at that 90 frames. Now don't get me wrong, if you play the blackout version of the game within Call of Duty Mobile, obviously that's going to be a battle royale with a ton of players so it is going to dip down to maybe 60 or 70 frames a second but in regards to the online multiplayer experience it was fast, fluid and exactly what you need for a Call of Duty shooter. Now while I am dying quite a lot in this gameplay that you're seeing here, that's mainly because of the touch controls. Again, using a controller is a much better experience with most mobile games in my opinion. Now you do also have to keep in mind that because of that smaller screen, the UI elements for like reload, crouch, jump are a little bit smaller than what you may find, but again Call of Duty has a really nice system where you can rearrange or change the shape, opacity and size of the HUD to get that great game experience, so overall it wasn't really too bad. Genshin Impact is quickly becoming one of my favourite mobile games for the gameplay, story and also the amazing visuals. It's basically like playing an anime on your mobile device. Now keep in mind that this is a really heavy game in regards to the GPU, graphics performance, frame rate, all that sort of stuff. So on the Pixel 5 I was actually averaging around 35 frames per second. Now don't get me wrong that's nowhere near as good as 60 or 90 frames a second but in general it still played quite well. There wasn't really any slowdown in regards to the actual gameplay or jitters, it's just the frame rate was a little bit slower. Now on some console games on an Xbox for example you're still hitting that 30 frames a second so it's not necessarily the end of the world it would have been nice to get that 60 or 90 frames a second though but even playing at 35 it felt actually more like an anime because of that stuttery frame rate that you get when watching it on a tv for example overall really great game really nice gaming experience and the cutscenes are awesome now another surprise for me was gta vice city 
Now, don't get me wrong, this is by no means the newest game out there, but in regards to the graphical performance, it still performs extremely well. As you can see from this gameplay here, you've got a ton of particle effects, lighting effects from the car headlights, you've got that really nice sun going down as well, and overall, it was sticking to a steady 60 frames a second. Now, again, that is an average frame rate. Occasionally, it would dip down, and the slowdown that you may see in this gameplay, again, was only because I was using it with the screen recorder itself. The actual gameplay was smooth with no issues whatsoever. Now again with this you do have to use the touchscreen controls which isn't necessarily the best thing in the world but again GTA Vice City does have a really good system of rearranging the HUD, changing the shape or size of any of the buttons so again if you do have slightly larger hands with the smaller screen it's not really going to make too much difference. GTA Vice City is still an amazing game to play on mobile, highly recommended and all of the games that I've mentioned in this video are of course going to be linked in that description below. And then lastly we have PUBG Mobile, and this was mainly to test out how good the game looked, but also the UI elements. With PUBG, for example, you've got a ton of stuff on screen as you can see here, with regards to voice chat, pinging items, moving around, jump, crouch, lay down, plus you've got your inventory to work through as well, so I really wanted to see how that worked on the smaller screen of the Pixel 5, and again, it wasn't really too much of an issue. This one again was hitting 90 frames a second. Now for this one, the graphics weren't on the highest setting they could go to, they were a little bit one below there, but in general, if you're looking for a really awesome Battle Royale experience, then PUBG definitely has you covered on the Pixel 5. Now you can push the graphics up to high on PUBG, and yes the frame rate does take a hit, you're then going to be looking at mid 50s to 60 frames a second, which of course is still playable, but to get the full 90 frames a second with the Pixel 5 screen, you are going to have to notch it down slightly to medium to get the overall better experience in my opinion. For me, I would definitely take frame rate over visual quality any day of the week, so again PUBG Mobile looks great at that 90 frames. So, gaming on the Pixel 5 is as good, if not the same, as what you're going to get from using a device with the newest Snapdragon processor and a ton of RAM. Now, don't get me wrong, it may not perform as well as something like the iPhone 12 that has just been released, but the iPhone 12 also doesn't have a 90Hz or above refresh rate, so again, certain games like Call of Duty Mobile and also PUBG, although the graphics may not look as top as they could, the frame rate is definitely where it shows and can make some games look and feel a little bit better in my opinion. But as always, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of this video. Are you using a Pixel 5 currently? And if so, are you playing any games and how is that experience? Also, let me know in the comments which phone you're currently using or which games you're currently playing because I may feature them in an up and coming best of the month games for Android video. I am also still working on my full review for the Pixel 5, which is hopefully going to be coming out in about a week's time, so I've had a full two weeks with the actual device itself. So if you guys have any questions that you want to know about the Google Pixel 5, let me know in the comments section below or on Twitter at Copper vs Glass. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up down below, and if you're not already subscribed, now is a great time to do so, and once you are subscribed, turn on the notification bell so you're notified any time I post a new video here on the channel. I'm Michael from Copper vs Glass, I'm going to get back to some gaming on the Pixel 5, and I will catch you guys in the next video.